Hello and welcome to OCR's, well, JHEP's lesson on entropy and free energy. Well, this also includes enthalpy as well, and this is suitable for OCR and AQA. Not sure about, should be suitable for the Fed Excel and all other exam boards. So now imagine that you live in this house over here. I mean, that probably looks like my bedroom, but without the guitars and the old computers. But... Entropy is basically the mess of your bedroom, it's basically the mess of the universe and we measure that entropy, the mess, we measure how messy it is using numbers and that, well in a more scientific way, entropy is the quantitative measure of disorder, so i.e. how messy it is, because things do tend to get messy things do tend to get more entropic if you look at your wires underneath your computer or whatever you would find out that your wires are very messy when you walk around with your ear um with your uh, what's it earbuds uh and your earphones and such like you find out that your your wire does become tangled because things the universe does get does tend to get more disordered okay regardless if there is and well there needs to be energy but regardless if there is much energy or not and what we're going to do we're going to actually uh, find out the effect of entropy on reactions and such so let's have a look here we've got three states of matter we've got plasma as well but let's not worry about that we've got three states of matter and we can see that it becomes more messy or it becomes more disordered so therefore entropy increases as we go from solid to gas okay and entropy the sign for entropy because um, what i said it is a number the sign is positive everything is entropic because everything has motion well, apart from anything at zero Kelvin, at zero Kelvin, entropy will be at zero. But above that, entropy will be positive. It would, it would always be positive. So, and obviously, adversely, as we're going from a gas to a solid, we are becoming less disordered or more ordered, and therefore entropy will decrease. So let's put that into uh, let's put that into practice with quantitative measures. So we've got a gas and we've got a solid. We should predict that it should become less entropic. So the entropy change should be less. It should be a minus number, okay? Because we're going from a high entropy number to a smaller entropy number so the entropy change should be negative that's the only time entropy would be negative it's only if the change is negative so let's say for example this gas is 939 joules per kelvin this is um uh, this is the units for entropy because we are in motion so we're measuring in kelvin and we are in joules not kilojoules so and you need to be careful for that especially when we are uh, using entropy and enthalpy we need to be you need, you need to be careful so the units of that is j k per mole okay joules per kelvin per, per mole so we start off with uh that and then we end up with this we do have a nifty thing to remember to tell us how to find out the the entropy uh, the entropy change and it looks like this it is delta S, which is entropy, that's the sign for entropy, and that equals the summation, sorry, that's a really ugly one, but that's the summation of the entropy in standard conditions of all the products minus the sum of the entropy in standard conditions of the reagents okay I mean this is exactly the same for enthalpy enthalpy was just products minus reagents usually everything is products minus reagents or products over reagents that's if just if I had to sign up if I had to sum up F325 in one sentence it would usually be products minus reagents so let's put that into practice we've got the products which is plus 100 so you have 100 
minus 939 joules per Kelvin per mole and that would equal uh, minus 839 joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay, and as we can see here, it is becoming less entropic and we can confirm that by this over here we it is becoming less entropic and the best thing about this is that reactions can actually occur just due to the entropy change and due to the amount of energy that is in the surroundings even when it's at 25 degrees but let's have a look here and let's not get too ahead of ourselves so let's try and find out what the entropy change is over here well Let's do it by inspection. We can find out that the entropy change actually decreases because we have got three moles of gas ions, gaseous ions, gaseous atoms over here, but only two. So as we are going from three gaseous atoms to two, obviously we are becoming more ordered and it is becoming more less entropic, I mean. Okay, and that is a very important thing to remember. The less gaseous atoms we have as we're going from left to right, the more ordered it is. It is. Let's not, yeah. So, let's put the experimental data on here. So we've got N2, which is 192. But we need to remember that we should have the equation up. So delta S equals the summation of the products minus summation of the reagents. So let's do the products first. Let's do NH3. Now, we would instinctively write plus 193 because it is there, but we need to remember that there's two of them. So we need to multiply this by two. And the answer for that is uh, I don't have a calculator. Oh, hold on. Yes, I do have a calculator. 193 times 2, which is 386. Plus 386. So 386 minus the summation of all the reagents. So you've got N2, which is 192, plus 131. But we've got three hydrogens here. So we have to do 3 times 131. Now, the thing about F325 chemistry is that a lot of people lose a lot of marks because they don't actually look at all the information they've been given and write it all down. So the answer is 585. So 386 minus 585 equals minus 199 kilojoule, uh, no, sorry, joules per Kelvin per mole. And as you can see here, entropy has decreased, as we've said, by inspection. So now the thing is, some reactions can happen by itself. In your room, some things can go mouldy by itself. Mainly because of the bacteria there, but it can go mouldy without any additional uh, kinetics from adding temperature in. It doesn't need to add any pressure, any all depends on the temperature of the surroundings at that time usually it's room temperature and it also depends on the entropy change of the system and it also depends on the change with the surroundings luckily this fantastic guy came up with a relationship that binds all these three things together to check if a reaction is spontaneous and it is actually this man Called Gibbs, so I forgot his name for a moment. It's like it's 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 Josiah William Gibbs, and he basically said that it's delta G, which is what we're trying to find out whether something's sp spontaneous or not, is equal to T. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, no, it's not. It's equal to delta H, so the change in temperature minus the temperature times the change in entropy okay easy way that i remember it 
See that as I'm on the computer a lot. Terms of service. That looks like terms of service. It's also in alphabetical order. Technically. Technically. So this is Gibbs relationship and he, I'm sure he's become very famous from that. And we're going to use the Gibbs relationship in this next edition, in this next question. So let's have a look at this. We need to find out if this is going to happen by itself. If we put uh, zinc carbonate in our room and we leave it for 10 years, would this happen? First of all, we can find out that actually this becomes more entropic. So we should be receiving a positive sign for entropy because we've got one gaseous mole here and none over here. So let's look at entropy. Let's actually write down Gibbs relationship first equals delta H minus T delta S. So let's use a different colored pen. Let's choose blue. So let's calculate the entropy first. So entropy, as we know, it's summation of products minus reagents. So let's look at the products first. The products is this, okay? Just because we've got more here doesn't mean that that's the product. This is the product. So let's add up the products. 44 plus 214 is equal to 44 plus 214 is equal to 258 minus the summation of well you don't well the um, of the reagents 82 and that should equal 176 joules oh I keep on doing that joules per kelvin per mole okay as we can see here entropy is has increased as we've said as we've inspected okay so we've got the entropy change here and we've got the enthalpy change over here as you can see the enthalpy change is 71 kilojoules per mole Okay, so instinctively, we are working with two units here. We need to change them so they become the same. So, easy way to do that is to change this into kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. And by doing that, what we do is we divide it by a thousand. Adversely, we can multiply this by a thousand. Uh, it... Mm, I don't know which one should I do. Just because I like bigger numbers, I'm going to times this by a thousand. So this will become 71,000 joules per mole. Now let's plug this into our relationship, which is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Let's put delta H on there which is 71,000 joules per mole minus the temperature. The temperature is always in Kelvin, by the way. So it would be 293 Kelvin times entropy, which is 176. And that would equal 5.5. So putting that all into perspective, it would be 71,000 joules minus 51,568 and that equals plus 19432 joules per mole. So we need to find out whether this is spontaneous to happen or not. Oh, and also, you've got to check in the exam, it might be in kilojoules, you just divide it by a thousand again, so that would be 19.432 kilojoules per mole. So we need to find out if this is gonna happen or not. Gibbs, this fantastic man, says that if delta G is negative, it will happen. This is not so it would not happen, okay? And as we would write in the statement, 
delta G is not less than zero. So therefore this will not happen. So we need to find out what temperature is going to happen in. All we do is we make delta G zero. Okay, because if you want to make it a minimum temperature, if you want to find out the minimum temperature, this is in our book, we make delta G zero. So zero equals delta H, which is going back up, which is 71,000 joules minus the temperature, which we're going to find out, times delta S, which is... 51568 is it no it's not 176 now what we've got to do we have got to rearrange the equation so we can find out what the minimum temperature is and how we do that is it would end up as Delta H over delta S. Okay, that it just requires a bit of it just requires a bit of uh, tinkering around. But if we just moved lots of stuff on the other side, I mean, you just need to remember this to find the temperature. If I were you, I'll just try and remember it. So delta H is seventy one thousand joules over delta S, which is one hundred seventy six. If I divide that. 71,000 divided by 176. In the book, it does say 71 divided by 0 .1, 0 0.176, but seeing as I've multiplied it, uh, it's a bit different. So, the answer would be 403.4 Kelvin. To find out what it is in, in degrees, we minus 273. And that answer would be 130.4 degrees Celsius. So as we can see, this was not going to happen. Okay, on in room temperature, de um, de uh, I can't even say the word, de decomposing zinc carbonate will not happen at room temperature because room temperature is too low of a temperature and this is the temperature that is going to happen at. That is it for entropy and free energy.